Good afternoon and welcome to Studio C in beautiful West Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. This is video one in a short series introducing you to how to create uh, GUI programming uh, using Java. And in this case, we're going to use the IntelliJ's built-in uh, Swing uh, UI designer. So it's important uh, for this to have value to you that you do use uh, IntelliJ. Uh, to uh, to do this because every uh, designer of GUI works a little bit differently from IDE to IDE. For example, NetBeans also has a very good uh, um, uh, Java builder, Spring uh, Java builder, etc. So we'll we'll be showing you some of those. Um, talk about some of those uh, a little bit later on. Uh, this video in particular is a short one to kind of introduce the idea of. GUI will show you like the, the setup of how what it looks like in IntelliJ, but mostly we're going to talk about what makes up a uh, Java window and how it actually works. Okay, the first thing to understand is what the window actually looks like. And um, it, we've all seen Windows uh, many times. I'm, of course, using a, um, a Windows computer, Windows 10. You might be watching this on a Chromebook. You might be watching this on... Uh, on a Mac, um, and what you will find though is no matter what you, you choose, all windows have similar features. So for example, this particular uh, Windows 10 feature has a, a title bar across the top. This title bar has the word file explorer in here because that's the particular program I've got open. It has a few extra little features up here, and it has your standard uh, minimize, uh, maximize, and uh, and close buttons. Of course, um, uh, if you were watching this on a Mac and you open up the same kind of Explorer window, you'd see that these three windows are over here, but otherwise it still has this title bar, etc. The other things that all uh, uh, all windows have is they will have what's called a content pane. And so in this particular window, this content, this area here is largely considered the content pane. This area up here is largely considered the menu bar. And there's some subtle differences between uh, the way those look between between um, the different operating systems like Mac or Windows, but generally speaking, they all have that same that same concept. In Java, that window itself is called a J frame. So all everything in uh, in Java GUI starts with the letter J, or most things do, um, and this is called the J frame. The J frame was called a top level container. By top level, it means it's opening a new window. So the window itself is this container and the top level container is just this window and for Java, for most things, it's called a J-frame, but not entirely. Uh, of course, we've always had little windows pop up, right? The little dialog boxes that maybe ask you a question, you type in your answer, and you click OK or cancel, or just the ones that just, you know, they just click the OK. Those are called uh, uh, J dialog boxes, uh, J option panes, and other kinds of, uh, of terms related to that, which is not really important for now. But that is another type of top level container. And there is actually a, a, a third kind of different um, uh, group of them dealing with, uh, they're, they're called J applets. Uh, and those tend to be uh, containers containers that you know, live in other things like inside uh, an HTML or a web document, things like that. So JFrame is what we're going to focus on, uh, but the other things are important to understand. Now I'm going to show you a website from, um, from uh, Oracle that talks a little bit about what that is. Let me zoom in a little bit on because what I'm really just focused on is the, uh, is the pictures, not the, um, not the text. So this talks about this being this top level container. This uses an old blue, I think that's probably a Windows uh, 8 or Windows 7 even uh, uh, version of it. And then it talks about how the frame itself is on the outside. And then on the inside, you can have a menu bar if necessary. We won't do that in our introductory uh, examples, but that's there. And you have a, a very important uh, um, component called a content pane. So these windows use what's called uh, Java Swing. And Swing is the, the group of code that includes a, a, a number of subcontainers and, uh, and a number of components. And so the menu bar is a component. The content pane is uh, also a component that kind of acts as a container. This particular uh, image is saying that the top level container is a JFrame, and you can see it's got two major subcomponents, a content pane and a menu bar. And in JFrame, as generally speaking, you only have one menu bar and you only have one content pane. Once you go inside that content pane, though, you can have many different things. And so the, the next level of, of uh, uh, container that we're going to work with is called a J panel. And a J panel is something that contains a whole bunch of other parts. And the interesting thing about J panels is J panels can be stacked 
in a content pane and only have one or more of those panels visible at one point in time. So you can have two panels beside each other that are visible or you can have panels that are stacked behind each other and you just set which one of those is visible. Everything inside a panel, which is a container, would then become visible and I'll show you what that looks like uh, over time. A little bit confusing probably to start with. Let me just show you what it looks like in another window. Here is a, uh, a fresh version of uh, iTunes. And again, you can see that same kind of thing. There is a, uh, a title bar at the top, which has a few things. In this particular case, it just has the Apple showing, no words. There's my standard three little buttons. Here is my main content pane that works from there. If we were to look at any uh, thing, here is my IntelliJ I'm about to fire up. Again, there is your, uh, your menu bar there is your same three bars. So there's different ways you can configure whether your menu is part of that top bar or not. That's just a designer's choice. You get to, the more you get familiar with it. The other thing that's really important to understand is every one of these uh, components has what's called a layout and a layout manager. And so those are the one of the hardest things to get your head around when you're first learning. We're going to use some default layout managers um, and they won't work kind of, they don't do maybe what you naturally expect right away. So we'll have to show you a little bit how that looks in, in a second. So I'm going to go into IntelliJ real quick, and then this video is going to be done. Don't do this one along with me. I just want to show what it looks like. In the next video, I'm going to have you kind of do uh, the same kind of step along with me. So in, in video two, you'll see that. But here's how this would look. So I've got a, um, a uh, project already started. Um, and in fact, I've got several levels of packages. That's not really important for, for the specifics of this, uh, this tutorial. What I'm going to do is I'm going to end up creating a new... And I'm going to go down to not a new Java class like I normally would. I'm going to go down to this thing called Swing UI Designer, and I'm going to pick GUI Form. It's going to ask me for a form name. Now, the, the example I'm going to do in, uh, in video two, or, or video three, actually, is a simple calculator. So I'm going to call this GUI Calculator. And this um, um, uh, also creates a set. You're going to see something called a bound class. When I click OK, you'll see what I mean. So what it does is it creates this panel. You'll notice it doesn't create a J frame. That'll come a little bit later on. But what it actually did on the left side here, it might be a little bit hard to see on the screen, hopefully you can, is that it's create this panel, which is this, and also creates a set of Java. So if I go here, there's my Java code, which is currently empty. You actually don't see that uh, um, separately written. And here is the, the form itself. So again, this is the Java file, GUI calculator.java. This is the form file that has this code in it. And, and, and again, I'm just going to show you what this is, but one of the things I want to make sure you do right away, so I'm going to do it in this video and I'll remind you this, is you must give this form a starting value for a name. If you don't, it's, it creates a weird error later on that's hard to, to troubleshoot. It's really easy common mistake to make. So I'm just going to call this um, GUI, um, actually I'm going to call it uh, calculator uh, form. Give it a, a, a standard name. Now, what this has done is it's created a panel. Here's one of my things. What I actually just named was the, the panel itself. And this panel is a container, as I said before. You're not used to that, that uh, uh, set. And so you can see that there's a whole bunch of components that I can pop in. You'll notice that as I do this, they're going to kind of pop in kind of at random. And uh, these are the sort of things you start to work with. So you have checkboxes, you have uh, uh, different types of text fields, you have uh, what are called uh, labels, which are basically just... Uh, um, actual places where you can put text or you can put uh, um, images and all the different things you might expect to find like scrolling wheels and, and drop down menus and things like that. Okay, so that's the it for video one. Let me just kind of just do a quick kind of uh, review and then obviously we're going to get into this in video two. In video two, what we're actually going to do is, is create something without using the built-in viewer. I'm going to give you all the code. I'm going to show you what it looks like, explain how it works to get a bit of feel for what goes on behind the scenes. And then in video three, we're going to start to actually build this calculator I just mentioned. Clearly, this is not the start of a calculator. So step one, make sure you understand that the J frame is the outer window. J frames include menu bars if you want, and a content pane is required on the inside. Inside content panes, then you have panels. Panels contain all the other components, and your components are all the things you actually want. The, all the, you do all the work. So in IntelliJ, you end up creating a, uh, a new swing form that sets up the panel for you, allows you to start adding uh, features, changing some, uh, some properties down here, that's what we're going to walk your way through. Once you've got your, your main panel kind of created, we use the, the built-in uh, um, 
code in IntelliJ to create the JFrame around it because we have a relatively simple uh, first set of assignments, our first set of tasks, and then we'll be uh, uh, ready to create our first uh, program. All right, thanks everybody. Hopefully that's your, uh, you've enjoyed video one and we'll see you for video two. We're gonna create a version of Notepad, the old text editor, but entirely in code. All right, thanks everybody.